بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد Continuing on in our series during the holy month of Ramadan about those important manners and characteristics that we should try to have during this holy month and those things which we should try to avoid during this holy month and other than this holy month. So this is incredibly important. The characteristic I want to talk about today is something that we should strive to avoid because so many sins come from this very uh, this very action and it's an action of the tongue or it's a matter of us do, uh, dwelling into affairs and things which have no use to us and no concern they're none of our business basically and so this is something incredibly important as a reminder first and foremost for myself and then those listening to strive your best because it is so easy to fall into this negative uh, characteristic, this negative habit uh, of dwelling into affairs and things that have no concern to us. For example, sometimes, especially, unfortunately, things related to the religion and relate and outside of the religion. For example, getting involved in you know who's the latest star. Uh, they so-and-so just got married and so-and-so just got divorced they're working on their third marriage they just adopted a, ch a child in this country they you know finding out all this news that has no benefit especially if you're spending hours and hours involving yourself in these affairs which have no concern for you I have no no benefit for you in this life nor in the next so then the, a person who involves himself deeply in these affairs it's like a loser in both lives because what they do something and they involve themselves in affairs which have no benefit in their dunya or their deen and this is why it's incredibly important for us to strive our best to try to remember this whenever we get caught up in something else because it happens to all of us whenever we get especially nowadays with in the information age with so much internet and so much information we're finding out just immediately that there's a new movie and then this person is doing this one and this person uh, was a famous television person they just died and this one married this one and this one is going to marry someone uh, you know and, and doing this and doing that and so we get so involved in what other people are doing that have no benefit for us so we have to remind ourselves is this going to benefit me especially in the hereafter does it benefit me in the deen or does it benefit me in the dunya ask yourself and if it doesn't benefit you, it's not going to help you in your livelihood, it's not going to help you in your family affairs, it's not going to help you with your social relationships or what have you. Ask yourself then the more important question, is this going to benefit me in my religion? On Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, min husn al-islam al-mar'i tarkuhu ma la ya'ni. Ruahu Tirmidhi wa Ibn Majo is bi isnad al-Sahih. In this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that was narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, From the good Islam of a person is leaving those things which they have, uh, which are of no importance to them. And this was collected in Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah with a sound chair of narration. What we learn, as we mention, is that this hadith is a reminder for us that if we want to improve our Islam and our Iman, and Islam here is in reference to how we submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how we are obedient to his commands, and how we stay away from his prohibitions. And of course, this there's a incredibly important relationship between iman and Islam. And sometimes, when if Islam and iman are mentioned at the same time, then the meaning is different. But if they're mentioned separately, then the meaning is the same. For example, so in this hadith, it was mentioned Islam. So. In its meaning also, it means Iman. It refers to 
faith. And this is a qaida or a rule that the scholars uh, have deduced from the nasus of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So here we understand that if we want to improve our iman and we want to have good iman and strong iman that from the characteristic of those people who have strong faith is that they leave those things which have no concern and no benefit for them. And you will see this practice the best from the scholars. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favors you and may Allah bless us all to sit in the, uh, the study circles of the scholars and, in the, and, and have them as companions. Ameen. You will see that Allah favored them to get to their level of knowledge because they didn't involve themselves in gossip. And they didn't involve themselves in this affair and that affair. And this thing, oh, the latest soccer player, the World Cup's tomorrow, this is going on, the NFL, uh, Sha Shaquille O'Neal did this, so-and-so got married here. They didn't involve themselves with these affairs. But in fact, they stayed deep in the, in the text. They stayed deep in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. This is the, the minhaj of the Salaf Asani. This is how the Salaf were, and this is how the scholars of today, that if you have the chance to sit with them, you'll see. You'll see that they're so serious. Some of them are so serious that even if you, you want to get a question to them, you may get a question, get an answer from them, but you see they keep it, it's very, at, at times, some of them are very impersonal. They will, they'll say, they'll give you the answer, and they keep it pushing. They're going to the next lecture that they have to give. They give a lecture in this message, and they're going to the next one. They're busy with da'wah the law. They're busy with benefiting the people and serving Islam. That they don't have time to just hang out and just talk and, and talk uh, idle talk and idle speech. This is the lesson for us, a great lesson. And it comes from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, as we mentioned in the hadith of Abi Hurairah. And some of the benefits from this hadith is that it shows us the best, uh, the, the most complete deeds. And that is leaving those things, uh, leaving those things which don't concern you. That's a part of completing your iman. That's a part of strengthening your iman. It also illustrates for us this important, uh, this important manner or characteristic or uh, mannerism and akhlaq wa adab that the Muslim and believer should, should have. It's not getting involved, especially if it's going to lead you to sin. That's even greater. Then the warning is even greater because as we're about to read some statements of the Salaf on how they were about this issue, we'll see that from Bab al-Ola, you know, for in the first, as a first priority, that we have to avoid those things which are harmful speech. For example, if you hear, uh, as we see in this time and age, unfortunately, so much speech about your brothers and sisters in Islam. And a lot of times, or, or some, sometimes you find that it's between people who are from Ahl Sunnah. For example, it's a warning against this website, this website is warned against this one, uh, a speaker has come into town, they boycotted the speaker and they've told anybody who goes to that, go listen to that speaker who has beneficial knowledge, that's what we want, that this person is offering some some beneficial knowledge, however, because of maybe personal reasons, or because sometimes there's a mistake on behalf of the speaker or the people who are warning that they're, they're busy themselves with warning against this individual. What is the purpose? The, the point here is that to get yourself involved in that, especially as the layman. Yes, stay away from people who are warned against if they're from Ahlul Bid'ah, if they're spreading out Aqidah, which is uh, uh, against the Quran and the Sunnah, if they're spreading uh, a methodology, a new way of da'wah, which is against the Quran and the Sunnah. For example, the, the people who tell you to worship graves, the people who tell you who, uh, you know, that have a political agenda, that's their whole methodology of, of a given da'wah. The people who busy themselves with takfir, cursing the other Muslims. The people who busy themselves with with uh, all, all the um, other affairs of bid'ah and, and khurafat. Then this, of course you stay away. But my point is, is not to involve yourself every time you get new news on the internet, that you go around and spread it. So and so was off it today. 
oh, I just heard, brother, that so-and-so, oh, I just saw him give salams to so-and-so, that, that he's hit too. Okay, these affairs don't 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 uh, benefit you in the dunya or the deen. They don't help you in the in the religion, nor do they help you in your worldly affairs. This is what we learn from the ulama. This is what we learn from the ulama of Ahl Sunnah. So this is a very beautiful characteristic that we should try to practice in our lives. And all of us need this admonishment because how many times I can speak for myself that I've spent hours over the years looking into such and such affair from this website. They warned against this one, this warned against this one, and you can, it destroys your heart. And you find at the end of the day, you're the one suffering. Because you didn't benefit in your deen or your dunya. You didn't benefit in your deen or your dunya. So that's what the Prophet was telling us about, about leaving those things which have no, which do not concern you. This is from this beautiful characteristic of the believer. Let's listen to some of the statements of the Salaf al Ridwan Allah what they have to say in regards to leaving those things which have no benefit. Qala Muwarak al Ajri, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Qal Amrun Anna fi Talabihi Mundu Keda wa Keda Sinna, Lem Akhdar Alehi, Walas to be Tarek Talabahu. أبدا قالوا وما هو قال كفوا عما لا يعني لا يعني in this narration of موارق العجلي رحمه الله تعالى he said an issue or an affair which I continued to pursue for so many years, from such and such year to such and such year, for many years, but I was unable to achieve it. And I was not one who left pursuing it, meaning I didn't cease to pursue this affair or this issue. And then his companions, they said, and what is it? And he replied, Ceasing to speak about those things which have no concern to me, which don't, which do not concern me. So that shows us how the Salaf were. They were serious about this, about trying, and 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 it shows us that it's very difficult to do, because it's easy to get caught up in in in, in the latest news and and indulge in it when it has no benefit in our deen or our dunya. Wuruya Abu Ubeda. عن عن الحسن قال من علامات إعراض الله تعالى على العبد أن يجعل شغله فيما لا يعني خذ لان من الله عز وجل. So in this narration on Hassan and I believe it's Hassan al Basri رحمه الله تعالى and he said from the signs that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has left his his slave is that he allows him to busy himself with those things which do not concern him as a to illustrate his failure with his Lord the Almighty. وقال سهل بن عبد الله من تكلم فيما لا يعني حرم صدق and Sahal ibn Abdullah he said, whoever speaks about those things which do not concern him, then he is prohibited from truthfulness. Subhanallah. So that for us is a strict warning to stay away from those things which do not concern us, from in, in, in involving ourselves. And it's easy to do. And as we see even the Salaf, they mentioned that it was difficult as the, in the narration of Muwarak al-Ajli, he said that that was something I continued to do and I, I, I couldn't do it and I still continue to do. And it was ceasing to speak about or involve myself in those things which do not, uh, which do not benefit me. And in another narration, Qala Atara ibn Abi Rabah, Rabah, Anna min uh, in uh, إن من كان قبلكم كانوا يقرهون 
فضول الكلام وكان يعادون فضول الكلام ما عاد كتاب الله وسنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أو أمر بمعروف أو نهيا عن المنكر أو تنطبق بحاجتك في معيشتك معيشتك التي لا بد لك منها أتنكرون أن, علي أن عليكم حافظين كرام كاتبين عن اليمين وعن الشمال قعيد ما يلفظ من قول إلا لديه رقيب عتيب أما يستهي أهدكم إذا نشرت صحيفته التي أملاها صدر نهاره كان أكثر ما فيها ليس من أمر دينه ولا دنياه In this narration of Afa ibn Abi Rabah, Rabah He said Verily Those people who came before you So meaning the Salaf Used to hate excessive speech Fudul al-Kalam And they used to uh, Oppose or, 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 or Oppose excessive speech As long as Except, or as long as it was, obviously this is not excessive speech, but meaning, except that they love the, the, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or commanding to the good or forbidding evil, or speaking about your affairs from your living you know, from your earnings, and those things which are a necessity for you. Do you then deny that upon, that over you is al hafidin kiram and katibin, meaning the malaika, that they're watching you and recording everything you do? And then he read the ayat that on, on the right and on the left, they are sitting. There isn't a, a statement which is said Except that there is a, a watcher ready to record. And then he said, Do you not have shame? Or have shame? Does, doesn't one of you have shame uh, that his, his, his record will be spread forth and it will be full of those things which it will have more of, uh, of more of those affairs which are not from his deen, meaning not beneficial from his deen, or from his dunya. So again, this shows us excessive speech and excessively involving ourselves in those things which have no benefit for us is uh, something madhmoon. It is something which contradicts the proper Islamic mannerisms. And especially during the holy month of Ramadan, we want to avoid that as much as possible and try to come back to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which is the best speech. The which is the best speech is what is kalam Allah. Wa khairan hadi hadi Muhammadin sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa asallallah kareem rabbi al-arsh al-azim an yatwalna fi dunya wa al-akhara. Wa sallallahu wasallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم